Three, two, one. We are live. We're on the air. It is Friday. Fix your wigs. Get your life together. And if it's your first time here, subscribe. Hit that bell to be notified. I just figured we'd go live. And whoever joins me, you join me. And then whoever doesn't join me, you might catch it later. But you know what? Millions, zillions of you guys want to see what's going on. So let's get this going. Shall we get an intro? I think so. Here's an intro. Stephen and all his friends. Thank you, 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 thank you. Oh my goodness. I haven't done a live one in a long time. So I don't know if this is even being out there and pushed out there, but I'll put your comments up here and I'll be looking at the, the comment board. So make sure you comment, write to me, tell me you love me, tell me you hate me, whatever you got going on, just talk to me. It's Friday. I figured we'd hang out together and I made myself a cup of coffee in a coffee talk, a Deco Live mug. That's right. One of those. Listen to this. Ah, that's good. Even the cup, you know, a good coffee tastes good in a good cup. So if you want to get one of these, I have a store. You could check out the store and all that great stuff. I actually today, um, I did something really special. I was driving around, uh, something I don't do. I'm trying to do more, um, live vlogs out in the street. I think, I think that's something I want to do. It breaks it up for me because we've been doing so many interviews. And if you haven't seen any of the interviews, check it out. Playlist, uh, Ace Fraley really frally people been going they go so crazy you pronounced it wrong you said it wrong i know but ace freely from kiss i had gene simmons from kiss i mean those are pretty big names in rock and roll i think so that's been on my show um well anyway those those um videos they're up you can check it out playlist and, and check all that out um i also today i did some stuff going around seattle um the grunge scene, when it was going on, and we'll talk about that, I wasn't really big on it at the time back then because I didn't want to change with the time because I came from a different era of rock where you dress up and, you know, Hanoi rocks. I thought glam was cool. And I thought, oh, my God, grunge is killing it. But now I appreciate the music and it's so much great music from, from that era came out. And we'll talk about that. It's Friday night. I think we could rant, we could talk, and we could love each other. But um, let's see who's here. Hey! There he is. There's my man, ALF. There, Alf. There you are. How you doing, brother? Good to see you here. And um, let me know what you guys want to see on the channel too. But I got some cool stuff coming on the channel itself. Um, and Coffee Talk, which this is a different channel. If you guys are watching right now, that's my channel where we actually talk about Coffee Talk and all that good stuff. I hope did I stream this on Coffee Talk or would I, I hope I streamed it on on Artist on Record? Huh? I might be crazy. I might be a cuckoo friend in alley. But anyway, um, what's going on here? I'm reading John Karabi's book. I think he must be a cool guest. Karabi's been on the show a lot of times. Have you checked out our playlist? He's been on this show lots of times. And John Karabi is, is a wonderful guest. He's a wonderful friend. Um, John and I used to play together in, in, in our band, The Star Effers. And that was a, a band that we played Los Angeles, The Cat Club. It was next door to uh, the whiskey. And I'll tell you, we will talk about that if you want to know. Chris Vickery, good to see you, man. How are you doing? It's been a, it's been a, quite a t been a while since we saw each other, right, Chris? Um, I haven't seen you in a while. Where have you been, huh? What's been going on with you, my friend? Um, is life good? Hope your wife is doing good. Um, thanks for being here Friday night, and I hope you're healthy and well. Um, it's been a crazy week this week, but I've been starting up Coffee Talk slowly. Um, not going live so much because a lot of people are back world's back. We can't sit and hang out like we used to, but I did some coffee talk stuff and I did some traveling stuff, which I went and covered the almond brothers. I went to Macon, Georgia. So I have so much video. I didn't know what to do with it. And I was putting it in Patreon, but then I've been sitting on it. So I did some stuff and I'm going to probably, I'm playing around with coffee talk, but I want to make it more my travel thing right we go to different places and meet people and just all that stuff and artist on record i want to make that my music channel here um where i do interviews and all that stuff you know with r celebrity rock stars that you like and that i like um been working on the boat i break out my coffee talk when i ah oh, man i'll break out the coffee talk t-shirt when i get back home please do 
Hey, man, you know what? I even got the old school shirt I'm wearing today, Talking Wax, which I like to bring back the vinyl game show where I give away vinyl records. Um, like to see who wants to play and what's going on. Maybe we can bring that back in a different kind of fashion and do it. It'd be fun. But right now, I want to do something on Artist on Record. I'm still going to do my interviews, but I'm, I want to talk to people who I find interesting. The last two I did do was Ace, and I did Gene Simmons, and we had Mick Mars. I even did Jack Russell. I didn't release it yet with Alan Niven. And Alan Niven, if you don't know him, he was the manager for Guns N' Roses, Great White. So I had Jack Russell and Alan on. I didn't release it yet because I felt like Jack really wasn't that together. But then I just saw a thing that Jack Russell played a show and he's like in a wheelchair. Like, I don't know what he's sitting down. I, I couldn't, I don't even know. It was kind of weird. So maybe I should break out the video and we talk to Jack, but then uh, I don't even think Jack remembers talking to me. <laughs> so there you go. But um, I want to do another one where I take you on location to your favorite album covers, actually go to it and video it. And I'm, we talk about a little history but um on coffee talk if you go to coffee talk now there's a great one that i did at the allman brothers uh you know the song in memory of elizabeth reed well we find elizabeth elizabeth's grave and i actually go into the story what the song and who the song is really written about did you know it was really an affair that dickie betts had with boz Scass's at the time girlfriend but then became his wife Pretty crazy story. And Dwayne Allman spilled the beans to Rolling Stone magazine. So I take you on that location. So go to artist, uh, go to Coffee Talk, subscribe to it if you're not, and check it out. It's there. In the meantime, we'll be releasing more stuff here on Artist on Record. But right now I'm just drinking some coffee and just want to catch up with you guys. So Chris Vickery's here. Always great to see you. ALF is here. He's reading Karabi's book. Yeah, ALF, this Karabi, check out the playlist. There's a lot of John Karabi here. There's a great interview I have with John Karabi about the time that his neighbor was a serial killer. That you got to check out. It's somewhere in the playlist, and uh, it's a crazy story. Yeah. Um, and they pulled John in for questioning because the serial killer's kid was found murdered. And they thought maybe John was the guy who did it. But no, it was the serial killer. Uh, he killed his own son. It's a crazy story. Karabi said we talk about it. It's been a while ago, but it's somewhere in my playlist. So check that out. It's a crazy, crazy story. What about OJ, everybody? Huh? How about that character? Huh? I see some crazy stuff. You know, people aren't going to, you know, you know, obviously, you know, allegedly, I can't say I'm, you know, getting in trouble here, but there's, there's some, there's some funny uh, post about him out there, but yeah, I guess finally justice in some crazy way. I don't think you could ever find justice for what he did, but uh, his life ended kind of young too. But um, you know what? I wonder what went on on his, did, did he ever tell his kids? Did he confess if he did or if he didn't do it? It's crazy, crazy story. That whole thing. The whole story is nuts. I remember when it happened. It's when I first moved to Los Angeles and I was lived with Corey Levington. If you don't know Corey, it was from the other show. And uh, Corey was an editor at Circus Magazine. We both lived together in Hollywood. And I remember watching in his bedroom. We were watching because he had the bedroom. I had the living room. And the chase, the infamous OJ chase. That was so crazy. It seems like yesterday. We're getting older over here. But anyway, everybody, I'm glad you guys are all here with me. And we, we chat a little bit. What about uh, Walona Judd? How about that one? Anybody hear about her in the news? Her daughter, huh? She got char charged with uh, prostitution, huh? She was like somewhere, maybe a ride for a ride. I'm looking right over here. Apparently, daughter of Walona Judd charged with soliciting prostitution ride for ride is what the headline says here. Yeah, well, ALF, uh, what, I forgot that interview. Saw it two years ago, I think. Yeah, but I found another one from four. There's a lot. I have a lot of interviews here. So if it's your first time here, anybody watching, there's a lot of stuff that I even forgot about. I even have stuff that I did not release, like the guy who wrote Brandy, You're a Fine Girl, the band Looking Glass, and there's a lot I got it over there. And uh, hey, JD, how you doing? That's right. That's right, man. JD, good to see you. I'm here at Artists on Record. Dig Alive. Hey, good to see you, my man. Nice to see you here. And it's good to see some people over here. And uh, I just figured we talk. It's Friday night. Grab some coffee. Talk with me. Let's see what's going on in the world right now. Let's talk rock and roll. What do you want to talk about? Talk with me. Uh, just tell me what you want to see. But 
I'll tell you what I've been doing today. Um, I drove around, drove around Seattle. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm planning to do some videos and some stories. I went to uh, uh, the singer of Alice and Chain, Lane St. Stanley's house, his house. Um, well, not a house, but it was a tech condo where he passed away. And in the same thing, I went to the same location where Kurt Cobain, you know, this week was the anniversary, last week was the anniversary of Kurt's 30 years ago. Kurt Cobain passed away. And um, oh, JD, what's he saying? Friday night and the lights are low, looking for a place to go. Uh, you know what? That's right. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's 30 years ago that Kurt Cobain passed away. And I actually went to his place. I went to the bench. They fixed it up for the anniversary. Um, I went to the house that he you know, passed away in, but then also there's a crazy story that I stumbled on that, uh, shotgun that he bought to end his life. He didn't actually purchase it. It was his, a friend of his that bought it for him because he didn't want, um, to go there and, and put it under his name. So I went to the location where the place used to be. It's the building is still there. Kind of just a weird vibe, you know, being there like that's the guy. They sold the gun. He brought it to the, the rifle, whatever it was. And uh, I'm going to make a whole vlog about that. I went video and all this stuff. And um, the last place where Kurt ate and um, just, I figured I just you know, do a whole little grunge thing. I, you know, it's funny now as you get older and you start looking for music to love again, I was not a big nineties grunge fan. Right? And now I appreciate the music. It was a lot of great talent that came out of here. The music that came out of here. Um, you know, and Nirvana, when you really think about those guys, there was a, a wave of music before them, you know, they just cracked it open. So if you check out another interview, I had an old interview with Nirvana's manager, Danny Goldberg, talking about the conspiracy theories of Kurt's passing and all that. Cause he wrote a book serving the servant, pretty good book. Well, anyway, I put something together for the anniversary. And, um, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's here. It was originally on Coffee Talk, but I put it together, pieced it nice. And, uh, yeah, put it there. Hey, there he is, cooking with the kid. Hey, man, good to see you. Yeah, there you go. Cheers to the kid. Hi, huh? good to see you. Mm. And you know what's good? You got the badge. You're rocking the badge. And you know who else got the badge? My man, ALF. That's right. Um, I actually, I don't know if you guys saw the Ace really interview when I did it live with Ace. And, um. Uh, talking of Karabi, any news about Brian Tishy? Uh, Brian's playing um, with Gene. He's doing some shows with Gene, and I was actually gonna going to go see them play. They're playing a rock and brew, but I'm kind of getting lazy to go. Um, the band who's playing with Gene, Brent Woods on guitar, Brian Tishy on drums, and um, yeah, I was gonna go. And uh, who's playing bass in the Gene Simmons band? Um, does anybody know? <laughs> of course it's Gene Simmons playing bass. I mean, that, that was a funny laugh. <laughs> right sound effect. Anyway, yeah, so they're supposed to be playing. Um, they're supposed to be playing. It's funny, when I did the interview with Gene, he didn't remember the guitar player's name. So I don't, if you know the name, the other guy who's playing guitar, put it in here. But um, any uh, news with what's going on with them? Um, yep, Gene's playing bass. So that's the only news I know. They're doing some shows here and there. But Ace, when I did the Ace show, there's so much editing I had to do with that. The real show, if you're not a member, and if you didn't see me speak with Ace in real time, because I, I did record it live um, for everybody to see in real time. But then Ace asked me to edit certain things out, so I politely did. So that you're not going to see now. That's why if you become a member of the show, when I do my interviews live, you'll get to see stuff that you're not going to see again. Sometimes people say things and we can't, um, you know, we, we just can't put it out. So, And they get into that moment where they start venting and they start talking. And then they go, oh, did I say that? So there you go. And um, oh, there he is, James James from Oz. Good to see you, my man. Jeremy Astbrock, I believe, is the guitarist. Right on. 
Right on. I'm trying to get a couple of other people on here, some wacky guests. But back to the Ace interview, it was a two-hour interview. In the beginning, I didn't think it was going anywhere, to be honest with you. He's talking about aliens. Then we got him back. He didn't really talk much about his new record. But there's another interview I went and did after that, which... And then Ace said some stuff that I had to edit out that you're probably not going to see politely. But the interview itself is pretty wild. And uh, let's see. And uh, what else was I going to say? Wait, JD, what, what are you asking over here, buddy? JD, Stefan, I heard you play bass guitar. Can you play uh, Can you play bass of any 70 songs you like for us? Probably too much to ask. Don't stress to do it. Only if you can do it. Well, obviously, JD, I don't have a set to play bass. It's not going to sound good. And um, you know what? But if you want to hear some good bass playing from the 70s, just go turn on your music. Sit back. It's all good, you know, you know, but, um, you know what I was, the music that I like and everybody plays how they feel to be honest with you. I'm a big, I love like Motown and I love just, you know, things that are like that, but that's not my style of playing me. You play your personality comes out and you can never pre pretend you gotta always be who you are. So I play kind of aggressive, a lot of downstrokes, a lot of like Ramon stuff, but I wasn't a big Ramon's fan. It's a funny story, but, um, you know, just a lot of, you know, like a fighter in the ring. I guess I had a lot of anger issues, but anyway, I guess that's what got me my gig with Didi at the time. But, um, you know what, man, any music that I like, and I'll tell you the bass players I do love James Jameson, Paul McCartney. Come on. Great. Now the one thing with Didi Ramon on bass, when I did play with him, cause I played everything on the low notes. He actually plays everything on the high notes. And there's a little tidbit for you if you're a musician out there. That's enough music talk for anybody out there. If you want to get real deep with music theory, Rick Beato, he has a good channel. And me, I just want conversations. David Soul, God rest his soul. Oh. oh. Yeah, he passed away, huh? God rest his soul. Love David Soul. Don't give up on us, baby. And uh, let's see. What else are we talking about here? What else? What else? What else? What else? I forgot what I was saying. I was going somewhere, and I went somewhere, and now I forgot. Drink some coffee. It's Friday night. Mm. But the Ace interview, he was a wild card. He was a wild card. Fun interview. Then I had Pepe Castro. If you guys didn't see that, I put a clip of Pepe defending himself. See, Pepe Castro, he had a band. Let's rewind a little bit from the 60s, mid-60s, called the Blues Magoos, and he's from the Bronx. Pepe is the guy who taught Ace guitar, taught him some bar chords. Peppy was the rock star in the Bronx. Peppy had his band, the Blues Magoos, played with the Who, the Herman's Hermits. They did all this cool stuff in the 60s. And they had some kind of song that was, you know, kind of a cool hit. Sounded like Love Gun. Well, anyway, Peppy was originally going to work with Ace on this last record. And somehow something happened. Now, I'm not going to say what happened, but something happened where Peppy didn't. Steve Brown came in. Then Steve Brown from trickster which i don't know any trickster songs myself and uh starsky and hutch that's right and uh 70s tv was the best starsky and hutch beretta charlie's angels come on come on manix come on you know, all great stuff police woman anyway um something happened there but Steve Brown went and did some interviews, and he's excited, Steve Brown, because he's, you know, produced Ace's last record. And if you produce the record, you'd be excited, too. But Steve Brown talked a little too much talk and upset Pepe. So Pepe actually did an interview with me and really dug in about Steve Brown. I kind of was sitting on the interview a little bit because I had Ace coming on the show. But then I put it out there. I don't think Steve Brown really wanted me to put it out there, but... Hey, if you're going to say something about somebody, you got to let the other guy say something back, you know? Like, if I say something about somebody out there, I expect somebody to say something back. And you got to take it. You got to swallow the pill. So that's it, you know? But anyway, um, but if you want to see the Pepe Castro interview, check out the playlist. I'm going to actually do a lot more with Pepe Castro because Pepe, not only is he a great musician, he's a wonderful guy, great conversation guy to talk with. Peppy actually had a band balance with Bruce Kulick. So cool. And in the 70s, I think uh, maybe it was the 80s, um, 
Paul Stanley sang backup on one of the songs, but he didn't want people to know because back then Kiss was like, you know, but he, you know, knew, but it's really, really cool stuff. Mr. Humble Brown, that's right. <laughs> Police woman, and Angie, man, come on, man. Come on. Remember her in the movie Dress to Kill with Michael Caine? Uh, remember that? And she was already old back then, like in her 40s, I think. Think about that. I'm 56 now. Huh? Time goes by. But man, Steve, what are you? What are your thoughts? Uh, you, you say, Mister Humble, are, are you a trickster fan? Um, what do you? What are your comments about what Steve said about Ace? I mean, what Steve said about Peppy? I mean, let's let's. You you heard the interview, and um, I want to hear what you people have to say about that. I wish I could put it up here for you guys. I wonder if I can. Um, I don't think I can. I don't have the video right here. I tried to put some videos before, but it wasn't letting me do this i wanted to show you guys something but i'll show you something really quick while i have you on the while i have you guys here which is pretty cool check this out really really cool. you could find this um right here right here i don't know if you're going to be able to see this but this is pretty wild this my friends this is this is the hotel where Kurt Cobain would hide out in um, Seattle and, and right before he passed away, this crazy motel. So I took, took some videos of that and then I went walking around. Um, this is where, uh, let's see over here. Let's see if I can find, it. oh, this is the shop where Kurt's friend bought the, the rifle. And, um, that's that's the shop what it looks like so i went over there and um probably gonna do some a little video about this story about i have not seen anybody really talk about that so um maybe it might be interesting i'll see how it comes out in the edits and um we could talk about all that stuff but anyway a lot of stuff i'm planning and, and trying to do and figure out here so friday night what's going on what's shaking huh talk to me everybody what do you got over here? I'm a Kiss fan from Argentina. Never heard a Trickster song, but I saw videos of Brown playing at Creatures Fest. All right. Well, let me ask you a question. How, I mean, he can play. That he can play, right? What do you think? What do you think about Trickster? Did you like it? I'll tell you one thing, which I'm sorry I didn't discuss with Ace was more about The Elder, the album. I know he didn't like it, but... I kind of like that record. And you know what? I didn't discuss it with Gene Simmons either. You know, you know, two hours flies by and there's so much to talk about with those guys. And, um, but I love a world without heroes. It's a great song. And I think also Lou Reed was a co-writer in that song. Great, great stuff. And I do like the Vinnie Poncia era, era of kiss. You know, some people might disagree, but I like it, you know? I think there was some good stuff. I mean, Vinny Poncia himself, which I did a whole interview with him. You could check that out on our playlist. Vinny, great producer. He worked with Ringo Starr. He came from the band Trade Winds. He worked with Phil Spector, Doc Palmas. I mean, a real legend, a real musical legend. And uh, it's almost like he was like the, the extra Kiss member because he was playing guitar, writing songs with them when they were working on um, Dynasty and Unmask. He was like, in a rehearsal room playing with them um and that was a weird time for kiss too when those solo records came out talked to ace about it um it was almost like the band was almost going to break up and that solo record was almost like a plot to maybe save the band but i guess they were so successful some members changed in the band i don't know but as we all know that's not peter on those two albums right but uh peter's solo record was pretty cool the 78 solo record, I thought it was, I didn't like it back then, but it grew on me. And that record was Vinnie Poncia produced it. And that's what got Vinny to do Dynasty. So there you go. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Blues Magoos was a hit. Had a hit. Yeah, we ain't got nothing yet. And Stan, that song, We Ain't Got Nothing Yet, if you listen to it, that's the same kind of line from Love Gun. It's really, really cool. Um, Glenn Kidd in the house. Glenn, uh, Glenn says, I great song. For, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you, Glenn. Good to see you, Glenn. 
how you doing, man? And um, yeah, remember them on Fridays when Kiss played Fridays? We we were little kids. We stayed up late to watch it. That was pretty cool. I thought so. Remember when you stay up really late to see Kiss on Jerry Lewis? <laughs> You're like just to see it, you know, wait all night. You fall asleep, but the blues stand, blues magoo's good stuff. Actually, I want to bring back some other stuff. You know, we talk about all this music, but another favorite of mine, who I met Vinny Poncia from, is one of my favorite guys in the world, is Kenny Vance. Kenny Vance was from Jane the Americans. Now we're digging into the 60s. Now we're digging into our records into the 60s. And Kenny Vance, Jane the Americans, this magic moment. I mean, Cara Mia. I mean, come on, great music. Uh, Jay. Uh, and the Americans was such a great band. Well, anyway, Kenny Vance had a solo record out, and, I, and one of the songs that he did was Looking for an Echo. It was my mom's favorite album. And um, and I was a kid. I grew up with it, but I made a friendship with Kenny, and he's so great. He has a documentary out called Heart and Soul. So if you check it out, got to check it out. I got to bring him back on here. He's such a talented guy, Kenny Vance. He also was responsible uh for eddie and the cruises i mean he was walking by a bar in the village and he found john cavity in the beaver brown band he heard them and i had john on the show telling the story which is somewhere in the playlist here uh and john didn't hear back he goes hey you guys sound good you want to be in a movie and john thought he was pulling his leg not a year later that didn't happen you know but john had a bar band and the rest is history but yeah kenny did eddie and the cruises um he also founded uh, Steely Dan. Basically, he was. They wanted Kenny to be his uh, singer, the lead singer for Steely Dan. Check it out. There's all this great stuff we have here. But anyway, you made me stand. I mean, I blame Stan over Stan Meadows. You made me. You mentioned Blues Magoo's, and I went back to the '60s. But yeah, I have so much of Peppy. I got to bring it back. I got to edit it. There's a lot of my interview with with him, and just to let you guys know, all my interviews are unedited and they're in my members only and i only do that because youtube's algorithm is so weird man and if you play something too long people tune out they're only watching the normal person watches three to eight minutes so that's why this i do a lot of clips and that's what i'm doing but anyway um this was a random one for me to go live tonight and to hang out to talk with you guys and to see what's going on here maybe one day we'll get this chat rocking when there's 100 people in here and people are shooting me a bunch of questions and we could talk and chat and whatever you want to talk about i'm all into it you know um but yeah so we got all that the world's gone crazy 30 years since uh kurt cobain passed away do you remember where you were when kurt passed away or were you even born <laughs> I want to know that, huh? Were you into the grunge music or wasn't your thing? Or were you against it because it was changing of the gods? It was a changing an error? You know, think about grunge. It to totally changed the music business. Definitely did. Oh, I got my buddy calling me now. Be Robert. Get into the second here. Um, let's just put this on mute. But really quick, I wanted to come on live, do a live with you guys. It's 28 minutes we've been on here. I think that's long enough, right? Um, if you want to see more Friday Night Lives, let's do it. Do I have anything to show you? I actually do. I went to a vinyl store, which we're going to do a story about that. And I want to share this with you. Hold on. I did buy a vinyl album. Since we are a music channel, I want to share this one with you. And this is a cool one. The vinyl place I went to, it's just a little hole in the wall, but it's a cool vinyl place, and it's owned from the singer of The Phrase. Remember the band The Phrase in Vashon Island? Vashon, am I saying it wrong? I'm from Brooklyn. Correct me. So some of the records from are from his personal collection, and, man, I found this record, and I grabbed it, and it's the Bee Gees. But this album... It's they were a four piece, and I never even heard half these songs. And it's so killer. I just wanted to share this with you because even like look at the record sleeve, the advertisement for the other records back in the day. Isn't that cool? You can see there's Eric Clapton over there. I think that's I Am Butterfly. There's the other Bee Gees. Yeah, they were a four piece. But the hit on here was How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? And then I started 
you know, going deep on it, there was a song called Israel. And then, and that was another hit for them. And the song is fantastic. Stephen Gibb, Barry Gibb's son, is a friend of the show. And I actually, right before I bought this, I go, Stephen, I never even heard this record. And he said, oh, that's a weird one. But there's some d- deep cuts on here, which the Bee Gees, I mean, Barry Gibb, I mean, their worst song is even great. There's no bad. What I'm trying to say is there's no bad song. I mean, what a great songwriter. But uh, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? Great, great album. Great song. But um, this album is killer. And has a little cutout I noticed right here. But it's in great condition. And it almost has, if you look at the picture, you know that reminds me of Beggar's Banquet. I think this came out like in 71. I'm not sure. 71. It was on Atlantic Records, this one. But how cool, cool record. So that that's one that I actually just found at this record store. I'm going to go back there. He had Ace Fraley's um, 78 solo record for 35 bucks, and it was in mint condition, and I didn't buy it because it didn't have the poster or the slip. Remember the slip where you could buy the belt buckle or the T-shirt? I wanted the whole slip. God, I got rid of all my original records when cds came out what an idiot i was but that's a cool album i'm gonna go try to do a show at that record store and when he's there um how to save a life i think that was the hit song he was had a hit in the 90s the band the phrase well he opened up this cool little vinyl store and i actually videoed the whole thing but i'm gonna go back i want to do one when he's there so we could talk about him and pick out a couple of my favorite records there was some rare frank zappa record out i called joe travis who does the vault the Voltmeister for zappa and uh yeah some cool stuff and i figured that'd be a lot of fun to check out uh, uh vote a v- vote a we got to bring back the vinyl i think so huh that's right oh the, she's car- you're correcting me thank you very much vashan vashan is that how you say it vashan vashan is it va or they, Vaishan? See, the way you wrote it, it's like, it's like oi vey, you know? But anyway, uh, the the fray, not the phrase, how to say, is it the fray, not the phrase? Oh, is it the fray? You know better than me. Okay, there you go. How to save, that's right. How to save a life is their song. How to save a life. Yeah, cool, cool song. Okay, Laurel, good to see you. You're late, don't you worry. Hey, you know what? Thanks for being here, you know? You get one of those. You get one of those. I'm glad you're here. You know? And that's how you say fashion, fashion, whatever, whatever. It's a cool place. Carl is busting my chops now. We'll get it together. I'll go there with somebody and they'll teach me how to say it. We'll do a whole show. How do you pronounce your town? You know, I'm a visitor here. I think that will be a great show. Uh, Me walking around. Hey, where are we? And I think that will be great. A great one. Let's see over here. Uh, Jason Walker is the uh, is the other Gene's guitar player, not J. Ge- oh, thank you. We, everybody's correcting everybody here. <laughs> you know what? Oh, don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just glad, Carla. I'm glad you're here hanging out with us. Thank you very much. But I will tell you one thing. Whether it's Vashan or Vashan or 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 Vapor Town, whatever they want to call that town, it is a cool little town. I'll tell you that much. And record stores, a lot of cool coffee shops there. It is killer. So if you're ever going to go somewhere, you got to go there. And who actually turned me on to that place was the one and only Mr. Paul Black. Paul Black, the original from LA Guns, he turned me on to that place. It's like a hippie community. I love it. It's really cool. Uh, Let's see. Did you go to? Yes, I did. I actually did check out uh, Mopop in Seattle, and uh, and I saw the Nevada display. Um, it's really, really cool. And um, I actually, God, it's funny you just reminded me, James. I have a whole video of it, and I never released it. Did you see? If anybody's a Nirvana fans here, there's a video of me in Aberdeen, where Kurt's hometown, where he was raised and born. And I'm walking around by the bridge that's supposedly written up something in the in the way, I think the song is. Um, and this guy comes up to me. Are you a Nirvana fan? And it was the original drummer of Nirvana, the, the one of the first drummers. 
And I thought it was some crazy guy. I didn't believe the guy, but it turned out he was he was the drummer. And uh, there's a whole interview with me talking with him. And um, he carries he, he was carrying this broken um, iPad. And he had a playing me the videos of Dave Grohl thanking him. Aaron, his name is Aaron. But yeah, check that out. It's a, some cool stuff. And that was random. I'm just walking around and I caught him on camera and I'm like, panning the area and this guy just walks into my camera hey are you a nirvana fan i go yeah so you could check that out and um okay um let's see let's see uh i'm getting messages from my wife now too maybe she's watching the show and i don't even know it but yeah i am actually gonna um give you some more stuff to watch and all this my wife's throwing me off again okay. Gets me crazy. Don't bother me. Okay, get all crazy live. All right. In the meantime, uh, yeah, yeah, Carla. Wow. With all the graffiti. Yes. There's a lot of under the bridge you're talking about. I think you are, right? Um, it was um really, really uh it was weird. When I was it there's a park right around the corner from Kurt's house where he was born. And um, yep, Carla says, Yep, okay. Um and he took me under the bridge. Like he took me the path that him and Kurt actually walk. So I followed him, but I didn't know who he was. And I, I thought I was going to get robbed or something. I, you know, I'm following this crazy guy and there was a easier way to walk, but he's taking me the exact path where Kurt and him walked. And it's like these, uh, blackberry thorns or something. And I had to like, push them out. It was weird. We walked under the bridge, and um, and I asked him. I go, "Is this where you you hung out?" I there was more to the video that I didn't get all in. I didn't put on YouTube. There's a lot more, and um, I'm actually probably going to go back and look for him because I like to now now that I met him, I know who he is. Because at first I was kind of like, "Is this guy wasting my time?" And I did say to him, "I go, look, here's twenty bucks." I go, "But if you're not the real guy, I'll hunt you down." And uh, it turned out he was the real guy and a sweet guy, you know? And um, yeah, we were under the bridge where he hung out and he was telling me his whole story and why and how he got fired from Nirvana and um, check it out. It's the play. I can't say better than him. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But yeah, at the time I'm walking under the bridge with this guy, he kind of looks like wacky and I'm like, is he going to break out like a hammer? And you know, murder me right here under the bridge but it's kind of crazy to think that's where kurt hung out and you know when you go to aberdeen and you do check out where he's he he came from all that was going through my mind about kurt was like this town aberdeen there's nothing here like but this guy changed the whole face of music like when you think about this guy changed music and um pretty crazy pretty crazy he did at 27 i mean he joined a 27 club in the end uh it just but but everybody says the same thing i had danny goldberg nirvana's manager on the show and even aaron the original drummer they all say the same thing about kurt he was a hard worker and he knew what he wanted to do and he'd make you rehearse as much as they sound punky at times and scrappy he was hard he was a no bullshit type of guy he worked really hard about his music so you know he was really was about the art of it all and a lot of talent the time when they came out i didn't appreciate it as much i remember when uh, teen spirit came out my friend anthony who was from new york he was in a band called dig his girlfriend at the time was a cheerleader in the video and at the time when i moved to los angeles from new york with my buddy ryan um, her name was Lauren. She was in the video, this new band, Nirvana. And, you know, back then, it's like, oh, I don't want to like Nirvana. It was a weird time for music, too, when they came out. You had, like, bands like the Black Crows were coming out. You had, uh, uh, it was like that era of Atlantic Records. I remember Ryan had that band, Electric Angels, which ended up breaking up. And um, that band, the bass player of the band became a huge manager, which now he manages Miley Cyrus, uh, Train, Courtney Love. Um, yeah, pretty much really the who's who, you know, 
pretty crazy. His name is Crush Management. Yeah. But it was a it was a weird time. Carla, um, my dad passed at the Abbey. Wow, really? Oh my goodness. Sorry about your loss. Aberdeen. So I, I'm assuming Carla, are you from Aberdeen? Um, let me know. Um, yeah, I was like shocked about it, but um I was thinking, wow, you know, there was like nothing there. And um is that the hospital? where Kurt Cobain was born too, because I was reading something about him going down the rabbit hole when he was having problems at home, he would sleep at a hospital in Aberdeen. Um, I guess maybe during his teenage years, you know, so he didn't, sometimes then maybe he was crashing under the bridge. I'm not sure, but there's stories of him sleeping in the hospital in the waiting room. I don't know if you guys know something about that. Uh, Carla, uh, no, lived in Seattle. Okay, gotcha. All righty. Um, your dad must have been. What was he? Was he living in, in Aberdeen? Um, it's far. It's, it's a it's a far far a little trip over there. But um, anyway, uh, Glenn Kidd, uh, did you ask Drum if he was a dad's porno? <laughs> dad's porno mag. <laughs> That's a gem. That's a gem, and uh, everybody was a fan. Uh, ocean shores okay okay good okay yeah i'm starting to get my bearings around around all the the world around yeah but yeah there's a lot of good history here can't take it away man you know you can't take it away but yeah i'm going to do some other stuff that bring to you guys more interviews and more traveling stuff and i want to do a, pl a playlist of album covers where i take you to the actual spots where your favorite album covers were you know taken or, you know, they took was the story behind it. I think that would be kind of cool. So there's some good stuff I did in Macon, Georgia with the Allman Brothers where we go to the actual location. And there's some behind-the-scenes stories. So I did some of those on my Coffee Talk. But album covers will be on this. I'll make a playlist here special. And um, in the meantime, thanks for um, just being here with me and um, – being a supporter of the channel. And you know what? I got to tell you something. I didn't think anybody was going to be here tonight, Friday night with me. Um, I was a little nervous, but see, there's 11 people. To me, that's 11,000. I appreciate all you people spending a little time um, ranting, raving, whatever, getting to know each other. Love having you guys here. Laurel, love you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. And uh, always great to see you guys here. And Laura, I saw your, your comment on the um, on Coffee Talk because I'm trying to revamp that stuff. We went live about the OJ. I agree 100% with you with your comments on that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. It's a crazy story. There was a there's a crazy – somebody uh, wrote a crazy – there's all these crazy things there. But, uh, man, you know what the, the crazy thing is about that whole OJ? Not to switch the subject, just his kids, what goes on in their head, you know, and – it was their mother and you know all these questions like did he i think i think they had to sign something that they can't speak but um it's just such a crazy wacky story and it's sad it's sad you know that but uh cooking with the kid thank you for being here my friend thank you for the badge and uh, thank you for the support you guys and um thanks for being a member and um i'm gonna do all my interviews unedited in patreon then I'll bring them here. But if you miss anything and uh, anything that's edited that I can't release again, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes the artist makes me take some stuff down. But if you get it in the real time, that's the fun of being a, a member here. And it appreciate you guys. I, I like to bring the vinyl game show back. We just got to get some, you know, I got to think of a different way to do it because it's a lot of work. But. We'll think of some stuff, you know. Uh, Ronnie Parker, there he is. There's Space Ace Ron. Good to see you, Space Ace Ron. You know, Space Ace Ron, I, he had a great question for Ace. I put it up there. And Space Ace Ron, you didn't think I was going to use your question. Thank you for checking the community board. And, and thanks for your questions. And um, thanks for being here, Space, uh, Space Ron. Good. It's good to see you here. You know what? Give you one of these. There you go. All right. Hmm. Hmm. In the meantime, I am Stefan. It is Friday night. It is a quarter after six my time. I don't know what your time is, but my time is your time. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, I think maybe if we uh, 
we 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 should do some vinyl game show or do some kind of trivia thing where I could give away some stuff. I mean, I got a bunch of uh slip mats for your turntable I could give away, and uh, you never know what I got here. Um, it is show and tell with Adika. I will show you something that I got that's cool here. Um, if you guys know who the New York Dolls is, uh, you might have seen this before. This is a cassette that Arthur Kane himself, the bass player of the New York Dolls, gave me when I met him. And this was his handwriting. Look at that. And these are songs that he told me I should listen to and that he thought were up my alley and practice bass to them. And uh, he had the Ramones on that on that one, So Alone by Mike Monroe. But you know what's want to see something that's even cooler on here? I still have his actual business card. Isn't that wild? Arthur Kane, New York Dolls Music. Check out the documentary about him. It's pretty cool. I have an interview I did with Sammy Yaffa of him formerly of Hanoi Rocks. He's in the Michael Monroe band where he just put a solo record out. I'm going to edit that together and put it out. And um, Sammy's a great, great guy. And um, one of my favorite bass players, Hanoi Rocks. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if it wasn't for that band, there'd be no Guns N' Roses. Uh, cool. I still use cassettes. Oh, they're making a comeback. But Hanoi Rocks, I saw them play Lamore in Brooklyn. Around 1983, 84, two steps from the move. And if you think about that album, that influenced Guns N' Roses. It really did. Um, Underwater World, Welcome to the Jungle. They they write this whole, you know, you you know that guns took a lot from them. But man, Sammy, great bass player, but what a humble guy. But anyway, I'm gonna be putting that out for you guys. In the meantime, thanks for being here. I rambled enough. And uh Glenn Kid, have a great night cooking with the kids. Sammy Yaffa is great, one of the nicest guys I've met. Yep, yep. And I have more Pepe Castro. I got about Four to six hours of Pepe Castro interviews. I'm going to bring out there, and we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. You know, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to leave you on this. Did you know Pepe Castro wrote a song for Diana Ross? It was the flip side of "Missing You." The song "Missing You" was written about Marvin Gaye. It was written by Lionel Richie. When Marvin Gaye passed away, his father killed him. Diana Ross did a, a song. At the time, Pepe Castro wrote the B side of that song, like "We Are the Children." And it was a had a theme song like We Are the World. A year later, Lionel Richie took that idea in the title and did We Are the World. Peppy Castro gets a phone call from Paul Stanley. And Paul Stanley goes, Man, did you get ripped off? And he goes, What do you want me to do? And it's a great story. I will have Peppy tell you that story. I have it already documented. I will release it and put it out. If you're a KISS fan and you love rock and roll. And you just love all these stories like I do. You're going to love Peppy's stories. He's got great stories of him with Keith Moon. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. In the meantime, you are beautiful. I am Stefan. Thanks for spending Friday with me. Just be well, be happy, and be healthy. And treat everybody else with kindness possible as you can. Me, I like to bust chops and mess with people. But in the end, it's all about the love. The more you bust chops, the more that means you love somebody. And I love you guys. Thanks for being here. All you guys, ALF, Glenn Kidd, Carla, Laurel, Cooking with the Kid, Ronnie Parker. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being here. James from down by Oz over there. I'm a man, great, great musician. Check him out. And uh, Laurel Rossman. I think I said your name. Laurel Rossman again, twice, two times. It doesn't matter. You're, you're great. And everybody that's not here, Stan Meadows, thanks for being here as well. JD, thank you for being here as well. Um, and to the former people that used to come here that don't come here no more, I love you. Chris Vickery, thanks for spending some time with us and I hope to see you with a Coffee Talk shirt. Post a picture of yourself on a community board or something over there on Facebook. But in the meantime, you guys are beautiful. As my daughter says to me, gives me one of these, I give you one of these back. I love you. We'll see you all later, you crazy kids. I hate saying goodbye, but it's that time. Later. And remember, click on the box you see right here on your screen and give us a thumbs up. Put your comments down below. Give us a like. It's real easy to do. And as always, if you ever want to say anything special on the show, put it in the comments. Who loves you, baby? We do. We'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.